Assalamu alaikum. Today we'll do a very quick video on the cubital fossa, the elbow joint of the upper limb. When you have a specimen like this in front of you, it gets really confusing first and foremost to determine what exactly it is. But just by identifying certain landmarks and seeing the bones present, you can actually tell what type of structure this is and its orientation. First and foremost, if you can see from the side view, you can see that there is a epicondyle protruding outside from the edges on this side and on this side. You can even see a host of vessels passing through a certain fossa. There are only two certain fossa that can be possible. Either it's the cubital fossa or the popliteal fossa. The popliteal fossa is much, much deeper and the whole structure itself is much larger actually. This is the cubital fossa. So, which side is up and which side is down? If you take a look on the top side, you will see a single cut section of the bone. This is the humerus bone, the shaft of the humerus bone. And the muscle that you can see here are quite evident. The one on top is the brachialis muscle. It covers the shaft directly on the anterior surface. While over here we have the triceps. The triceps has multiple heads, but for now, since we're taking it from the midpoint, just consider this as simply the triceps. Triceps on the posterior surface of the shaft of the humerus and the biceps on the, uh, the brachialis on the anterior surface. In front of the brachialis, we then have the biceps brachii, the strongest supinator of the upper limb. And here I'm passing a pin through the Biceps. With this, we can tell that this is basically the upper and the proximal end of the elbow joint region. Here on the bottom side, you can see there are two bones here. And because this is the elbow of the right side, here you have the radius and here is the ulna. The radius is much smaller due to the fact on top the head is narrower compared to the ulna, which is much broader due to the presence of the olecranon process. And uh, because it's a slightly in the semi-pronated uh, state, that's why you can appreciate that radius is above the ulna. Normally in the books you see the radius right and ulna side to side. This is a semi-pronated state, that's why the radius is above the ulna. So knowing the orientation and that the structure is indeed a cubital fossa, the elbow joint region, going back on top, we've identified the muscles present here. So from the front, if you can see, the biceps, as it descends downwards and inserts into the uh, radial tuberosity, it expands, the tendon expands to form an aponeurosis. Now, majority of the aponeurosis here is cut, but you can see how this tendon is flattening. This flattened tendon forms the bicipital aponeurosis and covers the entirety of the cubital fossa, protecting all of these important structures underneath. What are those structures? Just by averting this biceps muscle, I can see a very nice median nerve. And look how it nicely it's sandwiched between the biceps and the brachialis. Uh, in truth, actually, it goes on the medial side like so. Here, because of the position of the specimen, it is actually lying sandwiched between the two. But here you can see how the median nerve passes medial to this bicepital groove, comes into the cubital fossa to be the medial most structure. And as the median nerve descends downwards, it will then be covered on top with the pronator teres. But the pronator teres muscle has been disrupted here. That's why you can see the nerve continuing in its entirety. Up ahead, obviously, it will then be sandwiched between the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. Coming back up, there's a structure right beside the median nerve. Let's put a yellow pin on the nerve so that you know its landmark and right beside this is your brachial artery right over here nice big and thick brachial artery and the brachial vein is going alongside of it as the brachial artery descends downwards over here it divides into two parts one part is the radial artery going towards the radial side to the thumb side and you can see how the other part is the ulnar artery and that is going much deeper right over here. The ulna then gives multiple branches over here, anterior introsius, recurrent introsius, 
So we have basically these two branches, one down over here, the ulnar artery, and the one on top, that is the radial artery, right over here. What else can we see here? Other nerves which are passing in the same area, you can see in the lateral most aspect, this over here is the brachioradialis muscle. It's a muscle in the lateral aspect. It's involved in basically this movement. And you can see how a nerve is coming underneath to lie underneath it from the lateral side. If we were to follow this nerve on the back, we can appreciate that this is actually the radial nerve. The radial nerve originally, after passing through the spiral groove, comes to lie underneath the brachioradialis. Down below is the supinator. So this radial nerve will then traverse underneath this muscle until it reaches the snuff box of our hand. So let's put another pin over there. And since it's a thin one, let's put this pin. Actually, no, let's put the big one. So that you can see that this is the nerve we're talking about. This nerve. Nimana, this is the brachioradialis. Another nerve that we can nicely see over here. Notice on the medial epicondyle, there is a nerve passing directly underneath it from the medial compartment. It then passes underneath this and obviously it enters between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris. This is the ulnar nerve. And this is why when you sometimes hit your medial side of the elbow, you feel this jolt of electricity. That's because it's a nerve which is being injured. Well, not exactly injured, but just it's struck, that's why you have feel this sort of joint. So this ulnar nerve is present here, and the muscle you see here is the flexor carpi ulnaris. For the radial nerve, it was the brachioradialis, that was a landmark, above and supinator down below. Here it is the flexor carpi ulnaris. So we have done these three nerves. We have done the main artery and its divisions. The only thing left to show is down below, as we go further down, if this is the flexor carpi ulnaris, the next muscle you see here is actually the palmaris longus, which extends and becomes a thin strand up above uh, uh, distally. But here, most of the muscle obviously is cut, so you cannot see it. But I'm putting a needle through the palmaris longus tendon. This one over on the next side, that is the flexor carpi radialis. Here we have the flexor carpi ulnaris. This is the flexor carpi radialis. Three of these muscles originating from the medial common flexor tendon sheath. And the median nerve will go underneath all three of them. Beside this, there's not much else to show here as because as we go further, most of these muscles you see on the bottom right over here, these are the deep muscles such as the flexor pollicis and then the flexor digitorum. Here you can see the flexor digitorum fibers right over here. Pass it pale colored pin right through the flexor digitorum right over here. And you can see how the brachial artery and the median nerve are passing right above this. This is the flexor digitorum profundus. On the back side, most of these muscle fibers you see here are the extensor digitorum. And it's all covered with the deep fascia here. Here you can see, appreciate a bit of the nerves once again, the ulnar nerve actually passing here. It's actually outside its main position. It shouldn't be in the posterior compartment. It's in the anterior compartment. And this is basically the cubital fossa in a nutshell. The elbow joint in its entirety, you cannot see it because all the muscles are covering it. But if this comes in a OSPI, hopefully you'll be able to appreciate it more readily. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you once again, Allah Hafiz.